Our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is back with us today remotely as we try to make sure we maintain a distance, stay as safe as possible. So, Dr. Coley, let's talk about rapid testing. The state providing those free rapid tests when they have them to ship out uh, to all Coloradans. If you want them, you can ask for them. Hopefully they get to you soon. But how reliable are the rapid tests? Uh, Tom, you know, I'm using testing so much right now because of the high positivity, despite what the CDC and the Surgeon General said earlier today, because testing is our best way to know where we're going. So I use the rapid test for one very specific indication, and that's if I'm having symptoms and I've had symptoms for at least one day because they give you an immediate answer. Now, if you use the rapid test too early, you can get a fake out or a false negative because you haven't had enough time for virus to build inside of you. And similarly, with Omicron, we heard from the FDA just last week that the rapid test may not be performing quite as well. So I like to use the rapid test to get an answer immediately. And then I like to follow that with the PCR test the same day or the next day. So again, you just said one day after you're doing symptoms and this does work for Omicron overall. So, but what about the idea of being vaccinated and boosted? Does that change the performance of the rapid testing? Yes, it does. And that's a little bit of a curveball when it comes to the rapid test. So because you're vaccinated and boosted, your immune system kicks up a little bit earlier than someone who's unvaccinated, for example. So in an unvaccinated person, you need lots and lots of virus around to start having those symptoms of fever, malaise, muscle aches. So by the time you have symptoms, you have a lot of virus around. On the other hand, in a vaccinated boosted person, even a tiny little bit of virus can kick up that immune system. So you can start having symptoms without having a lot of virus around. You take that rapid test, it comes out negative, and you falsely think that you don't actually have an infection when you're just early in your infection. Ooh. So those longer lines are for PCR testing. It's obviously a better test, but it's a slower test as well. Uh, how does it work? Why is it more sensitive than the rapid test? The PCR test, what it does is it amplifies the genetic material of the virus. So even if you have a tiny little bit of viral load around, you don't necessarily need to worry because the, the mechanism of the test is to amplify that up and pick it up. So very early in infection, it can pick it up. So what I like to use the PCR test for is asymptomatic screening. In other words, I'm feeling well and I want to go see somebody and I want to make sure I'm negative. So that's a good one to use it for and after an exposure. But after the exposure, you want to wait at least two to three days before we were saying, you know, five days or so. But this has a shorter incubation period with Omicron. So about two to three days after the exposure, you want to go get that PCR test. So what about masks? What about staying away from people as best you can? Is this stuff we need to reamplify? Yes, and not just reamplify, Tom, but the rule book has changed this time around. So, with, for example, we used to say close contact means 15 minutes and less than six feet. With the degree of contagiousness of Omicron, that's no longer true. So even just a few seconds or minutes of contact, and even if it's more than six feet, can potentially expose you to infection. And the CDC has now really recommended strongly that we no longer use those cloth masks, which are very porous, meaning they have big holes that can let in particles. Because Omicron is so much more infectious, we need to step up our mask game, really reach for those KN95s or those N95s. And if you can't get those, at the very least, a surgical mask. All right. I'm sure people are going to uh, hopefully do their best. It's going to require more discipline than ever, and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll need to do it. And Dr. Powell Coley, it's good to see you again. Thanks again for tuning in, joining us today.